Mr. Beal, you may proceed. Thank you. Good morning, Chairman Molinar, Ranking Member Krishna Morthy, distinguished members of the committee. It's my pleasure to be here with, with you today to share my perspective on this vital issue. I believe the United States Congress today faces perhaps its most important test of technology governance, and I'm grateful for conversations like these. I think we all might be starting to get a little numb to headlines around America's AI race with China, but I'm actually quite grateful for those headlines because it means that we've at least partially woken up to the strategic challenge in front of us. And we certainly know the Chinese have. I remember sitting in my office in 2018 in the Pentagon watching Xi Jinping's New Year's Day speech and very conspicuously displayed on the bookshelf behind him was Pedro Domingo's book called The Master Algorithm. It was a very clear sign that even back in 2018 that the PRC leadership had taken this issue very seriously for the future of, of, of the world. So I'd like to do three things today. First, I'm gonna to try to break apart this idea of a race with China and unpack that and figure out what it actually means. Second, I would humbly propose a, a potential framework for a comprehensive approach that could help assure American dominance in the 21st century. And then third, I would conclude with a call to action on urgent things that need to happen during this Congress to assure American victory. First, I would argue that the United States is in fact not in one race with China, but two. The first race is for commercial dominance. And this is the one that we understand. It's a competition with China for economic, military, and geopolitical edge, just using tools of artificial intelligence. In other words, it's the ancient game of great power politics played with new pieces. The second race is a little bit harder to wrap our heads around. And this is probably also why it gets a little bit less attention. But this is the race toward artificial superintelligence, or ASI. This isn't your typical race between two competing nations. This is humanity against time. Nobel laureates in physics and Turing Award winners in computer science are sounding the call that there could be potential catastrophic issues with very advanced AI systems that human beings may lose control of. And as, as the ranking member mentioned, when, when the architects of these systems are purchasing remote bunkers and talking about summoning the demon, we might be wise to start to pay a little bit of attention. If any nation today develops ASI, particularly a hostile nation like the PRC, it might not be hyperbole to say that we could be facing a crisis. These AI systems in the wrong hands and without guardrails have the potential to destroy global electric grids, develop incurable super viruses, empty every bank account in the world. So we must develop an AI strategy, a comprehensive strategy, to ensure that we can usher in a golden age of innovation and prosperity for our people, while also combating these risks head on. We can neither afford to be Techno-optimist or doomers, we have to chart the clear path forward, we have to make progress, and we have to make progress with our eyes wide open. So my, my humble approach for policy making would what we might call the three Ps, protect, promote, and prepare. First, we must get a grip on protecting our capabilities from being harvested by the, by the adversaries. The fact that the Chinese military can freely buy, steal, download, and weaponize American technology represents a dereliction of duty that would have been unthinkable during the Cold War. A recent report by the Center for New American Security and the Institute for AI Policy and Strategy found that last year alone, an estimated 100,000 advanced AI chips, about $2 billion worth, were smuggled into China. Second, we must promote American technology abroad and at home. We have to lean into innovation. We must, not, we must not just defend, but go on offense. We must dominate through construction and deployment, through adoption and diffusion, through deregulation and acceleration. Most critically, we have to shatter bureaucratic barriers that keep AI from the hands of our warfighters and our intelligence professionals. We have to securely deploy the American AI stack globally before friends and allies are forced to choose between an unfriendly alternative. And we should seek a US military that with the help of AI and digital technologies could become twice as lethal at half the cost. Third, we must prepare. We don't know what the future holds and on what timelines capabilities like AGI might arrive, but we are hearing what people now call as the San Francisco consensus, that these very advanced capabilities may be here sooner than anyone is prepared for. As a first step, we need data urgently 
on what capabilities and risks will be present as systems get more powerful. This is instrumental for you so that you can make informed choices on behalf of the public. I urge, I urge Congress to establish a classified test and evaluation program for measuring loss of control risk and weaponization risk. Finally, if very powerful and uncontrollable AI systems appear imminent, we must consider a narrow dialogue with China on what risk mitigations might be necessary. I'm not suggesting we're going to send the, the best of the Facebook friend requests at all. I, I'm not saying that we're not going to compete vigorously with China for commercial and economic supremacy and military supremacy. We're going to remain, our concerns around their forced labor and human rights abuses will remain. But we must figure out ways to channel competition away from mutual destruction. The message to Beijing, again, America will outcompete you. But if we can figure out appropriate verification measures, there could be room for a discussion on what superintelligence guardrails might look like. There's a significant opportunity in front of us. America can win the commercial race, drive the economy forward, infuse our founding principles and transparency into global AI adoption. We can use AI to promote human flourishing and freedom, but only if we deal with threats head on and act with the urgency this moment demands. Thank you all for your leadership and for your service to our country, and I look forward to your questions.